Well, hello everyone. It is so nice to be with you all again. Tom, we're back. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've done this. It has, it has. Well, everybody knows who Tom is because you were with us, I'm sure, throughout the summertime. So well done, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I always have such a high expectation of you when <laughs> you're, you're, you're oh. speaking. Oh, okay. And you always live up to it. Oh, there you go. That's really nice. Okay, okay. there yeah. you go. Well, that is a little bit of a segue into our brand new message series for this fall called Redirecting Root. Do you say root or route? Root. <laughs> I can't remember anymore. Don't talk about that too long in your small group because believe me, it has been a point of contention here with the staff at Nativity. So for sake of the series, we are calling this Redirecting Root. So this series is all about expectations, the expectations that we have of ourselves, the expectations that we have of other people, and probably in each season, our expectations change. So hmm. do you have any specific expectations for the fall right now that you yeah. want to share? Yeah. I mean, even though I wrote this question, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I mean, I think I kind of expect it to be busy because fall tends to be busy. It's it's a, it's a sprint to Christmas. But I, I expect really good things, I guess. Like I'm, I'm thinking you know, we have some, some goals, some pretty cool series planned, some good things for Rebuilt planned. And I expect it to go well, I guess. So mm -hmm. maybe that's a maybe that's a dangerous place to be. Um, but yeah, I expect to, to to get some things done and yeah, to go to go quickly. What about you? I know it's funny because I read the question that you wrote a couple of days ago, and I still wasn't quite sure what my expectations were for this season. However, for us, and I know this is the same for your family too. It's back to school. So I'm I'm hopeful that my son will have a good school year. Yeah. You know that he'll he'll um, you know get closer to friends, and he's a sophomore this year, and so he's no longer the freshman, but so he's not the youngest kid on campus, but you know he's still finding his way, and so I have expectations for him. But go so ahead. I was saying I want to work, you want the family. That's what I'm just. That's an. That's because you're a guy, and I'm <laughs> well, a woman. I wasn't going to say that, but that's just interesting. <laughs> that reveals a little bit where your expectations go, though, about. A little bit about you, I guess. That's yeah, fine. yeah. And it's not a sexist thing. It's just a where we are living. Yeah. You know, it's where, yes, it is. <laughs> I feel that way about work. Don't worry, Tom. Okay. I have high expectations no, I was for you at work. Out, <laughs> how we, how, I was just pointing that out. Because different people will go different places right. in their groups with it. So right. it'd be interesting. So speaking of, what are some of the expectations that you have of yourself and of others and yeah your job. yeah I, mean, I think about some of the other things questions is you know who do you expect the most from or where do you and a lot of times i do think it's myself um i just ex expect to do things well i guess and if i don't i get frustrated with myself I mean, and some and everything from work but sometimes like playing golf or um learn to play guitar like mm. my hobbies i think are i'm sometimes frustrated by those expectations i have for myself so um but I, you know, I do think, you know, uh, expectations for God to kind of show up and kind of help me out. I actually just something happened the other day. And, you know, Father Michael has quoted, I think it's St. Teresa Avila, like, you know, uh, God, if this is how you treat your friends, no wonder why you have so few of them. <laughs> I got frustrated just the other day about that. So I guess I do have high expectations for God as well. That's an interesting question. And it was one for me that I honestly had not considered about what are my expectations of God? And so for me personally, I, I had to take a step back and I thought, gosh, you know, I, it really starts at a very foundational level that, okay, God is real. That's an expectation. Right. There is heaven. That's an expectation. Um, but again, I almost felt guilty that that was such a elementary expectation. It felt like a low bar, like yeah, low expectations yeah, for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I'm sure your expectations of God are probably a lot higher than mine. Well, I think this comes back, and we'll kind of talk about this through the series too, about, but yeah, envisioning what it is that we want God to do or asking God to do. Often God, you know, asks people, what do you want me to do for you? And it's then being able to vision it, articulate it where God acts. So, um, and we're going to get to that in a few weeks. You know, today's mm -hmm. kind of like just becoming aware of these expectations. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think the the more we, in some ways, the more we expect from God, the better off, but then sometimes we can have expectations for God that are not quite right, that are misaligned. And we see that too. And, yeah. and that can get us angry at God, you know, we kind of see that 
in the parable today, I think. Right, right, right. Well, I we're going to take a look now at the parable that uh, Father Michael talked about specifically in the message. I did want to point out, it feels like we talk about this parable a lot. I know, I know. I was thinking it's funny how <laughs> you, you, you're like, doesn't this come all the time? Well, it came up because last summer we did talk about Luke 15, and then it came up last Lent. Right. And, it, and, and the liturgical year comes up, which is year C. It comes up twice. So okay. you did have it last Lent, and now we do have it again this fall. But then it won't come up again for a while, Kelly. So it's okay. Oh, well, I was just going to say, does it come up so often because there's a, a message in here that's so poignant or well, more poignant? I think what's one of the great things about the parable of the prodigal son, I think you could, there's so many different angles to take on it. So like even a few years ago, we did a series on money, and we talked about the money that's aspect of this. And I think we're talking about expectations, as we'll get to in a second. I think it's such a rich parable um, in, so, in so many different ways. So, Well, that's how the whole gospel was today yeah. with the three different stories. So let's jump into this one. So Luke 15, 25 through 27. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years I have been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when... This son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home. You kill the fatted calf for him. My son, the father said, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Do you relate to the older brother or the <laughs> younger brother? Uh, I relate. Um I relate to both, actually, in some ways. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I think, though, you see, as, as Father Michael talked about, all the expectations this the older brother had that he never articulated. Well, you never even gave me a goat with my friends. Got, you know, Father, why haven't you given me more? Mm-hmm. And I think we can get like that with God as well, and other people, too, right? We, right. We, and as Father Michael said in the message this week, like, yeah, it's tough. You can have that experience of somebody coming at you of, like, I didn't know that was an expectation for me. You know, it happens in workplaces all the time, right? Of, And it can happen in families and homes and marriages and things like that. I didn't even know that was an expectation. Right. And as he said, build up that resentment. And again, so I think we can build up that resentment when it comes to other people. We can build it up resentment with God. God, why aren't you really looking out for me or mm-hmm. taking care of me? So, mm-hmm. um, yeah. So I guess a little bit the other day, I, I grumbled and complained to God. You know, I think I complained to him, but yeah. God, why aren't you helping me out here? I'm in a little bit of trouble. I I ha- I do that often. Yeah. You know, so that was really a key point of the message today, that when you're grumbling, when you're complaining, it's really about an unmet expectation. And, and you know, when it comes to our relationship with God, I know, you know, there are so many people, especially, you know, folks that I grew up with who are like, well, as long as you, you know, pray this way and go to mass and you do all these things, everything will work out okay. Yeah. And then that is when you get an unmet expectation. You're like, God, why are you doing this to me? I, I've been dutiful. I've been faithful. Exactly like the the, the, the older brother that mm-hmm. I've done all I'm supposed to do. So, God, you're supposed to hold up your end of the bargain, which sometimes is maybe give me things, which is sometimes maybe I'm supposed to have a trouble free life. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, that's where we have to just like with our human relationships, where do these expectations come from? Where did we form them? Why do we have them? Search our heart for that. Again, for God, for our closest relationships, where do these even come from? Right. You know, and I think that's kind of like why this is a good start. We're going to, we're going to take our time, you know, this is why we do a series. So we can can explore all these things. And I think especially in the fourth week, we'll look a little bit more expectations about God, but this week, yeah, God, anybody else and kind of just examine them reflect upon them yeah and i really liked the uh the final note from father michael's message about how simply lowering your expectations to have none so that you're never disappointed is not healthy and is not the way god wants us to live and um yeah that's talking to me right there (laughs) because i've been there and i've done that and it it doesn't work you still get disappointed so anyway we're going to talk about that more all right everyone well we 
thank you so much for joining us today. Tom, do you want to wrap us up in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, just for uh, opportunity to meet in groups, and we pray that as we meet that you would help us to unearth the expectations in our heart, the expectations we have for our closest relationships, the expectations we have for you, expectations from work. God, unearth them. Help us to deal with them in a holy and healthy way through the course of this series. And We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Be sure, if you haven't already, to download that resource tool. You can text the word ROOT to 88877, and there you can get a PDF that can help you keep track of your expectations each and every day in a variety of categories so that you can begin identifying where those expectations live. All right, everyone. Well, we hope this conversation starts your conversation. Great to be back with you, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for participating in small groups. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. You can be a part of our mission to love God, love others, and make disciples by sharing this video. We're so grateful you're a part of our community.